Our scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Eudia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, I ask you, loyal fellows, to help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Let's pray together. God, today we ask you to open our hearts and our ears to hear the words that you're speaking to us. Use Claire as your vessel to deliver the message that you have for us today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Touch our hearts and our lives. Direct us in your ways. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. Wow, sorry, I bounced your ears there. This has been an interesting number of weeks as we have walked together, as we've been trying to experience God in various ways, and yet at the same time, God is bigger than everything that we put together. I started working on this sermon a number of weeks ago, and the further I worked, the more intrigued I was, and I finally named it the God Particle, playing with the Higgs boson. Now, Higgs boson is this concept from physics, and I'm not a physicist, so I'm up to make some very big mistakes this morning, or minute mistakes. But it's this concept of this stuff, this particle, that allows an electron in quarks to become something. It adjusts their speed, it makes them dance or to spin, and Without it, they aren't, but with it, they are. Now, this concept did not fully exist as a reality when I was a child in school because it was only recently that it was verified by some collider in Europe that they brought these electrons and they ran them around this 18-mile uh, collider and smashed them together, and when they smashed together, they made what I understand was sort of a wave. How they saw that wave is beyond me. But somehow, they said there's this thing out there that makes things be things. Okay, I understand that. But as I was thinking about this concept, I realized that Beth picked up this uh, philosopher's comments, and I said, that's really what it is. It's God creates an ability for you to become you. And sometimes we try to be something we are not. And it's a whole lot of work for a person like me to be somebody like Beth, or somebody like you. Could you imagine, those of you who know me, to put me in a 
contemplative space for weeks on end with nothing to do with my hands. I wasn't created to do that. And neither were you created to be something you aren't, but we keep trying to somehow grow our edges that are weak. But yet God has given each one of you an ability, a gift. And many times we don't find that out until late or later than it should be. This week during Broken Bread, we were playing with the, the story of the lost coin or the parable. And this lost coin was something that was something I always looked at and thought, well, yeah, they lost a coin, a person was lost, and that lost person, you know, was terrible. And, and then when they repented, they got back and they were a found coin. And then I began to think about the scripture a little further, this story of where this woman had ten coins and the coins that she had. Let me read it for you. In Luke chapter 15, it's in verse 8, it says, Suppose a woman had ten silver coins and loses one. Does she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing with the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And I thought, well, that doesn't sort of fit with this. They don't come together. But I wonder if the lost coin is one of the gifts or part of the gift that God has given you. Think about this. You were designed to do something, but you're doing everything else but that one thing. And the day that you begin to do the thing that God has called you to do, it's as if you have been made whole, your satchel of coins is together, and you begin to dance and swirl sort of like the electron does when it comes in contact with this God particle or Higgs boson. And you begin to perform and do the things that you were called to do because it just happens, it's synergy and it's exciting and life is experienced within you and the re angels rejoice it says the angels rejoice and I think the translation a good translation is spin around and dance and how many of us have been going through life somehow methodically doing but yet not fully alive because somehow a coin's missing. I chose the scripture that I chose from Philippians chapter 4 where it says that the part of it that I really wanted to pay attention to is the latter part. It says I lost my spot. My apologies. Whatever is true Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if everything is excellent or play, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. What I'm saying is, I believe that God is calling us to think and to focus on the things that energize us, the things that are neat, the things that are awesome. But how many times have we as people of God, as people in the church, we have spent our energy on, did you see the bad thing that person did? Do you know that there's this immense amount of sin in the world? Do you know that the world is going to, instead of God is working and he wants to bring things together so that you can start to dance again. How many of us have lost that dance 
or have put it to side because we say it isn't in me anymore. I don't think I'm really worthy. But Jesus said, you are special. You've got ten coins. And you're running on nine cylinders. I want you to dance. I want you to move. And it's in the, the philosopher and Paul say this from, from Acts. It says this in Acts 17. It says, for in him, think about this, and think about the Higgs boson or the God particle, and put this together. Think about the philosopher way back there 2,000 years ago. And then Paul repeats him and says, for in him we live and move and have our being. The Higgs boson is saying, with that, or the concept is that you can't have mass, you can't be if it doesn't exist. And yet, spiritually, we are not without Him. <coughs> Thank you. Somebody's running. Get me some water. Think about what God wants from us. Think about what turns your crank. Think about what makes you happiest. It's probably not just a video game. It's probably not your cell phone. It's probably not something that is trivial, but there are things that God is calling us to, and when you do those things, it lights your fire. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when in the past you engaged in those things. And you say, if only I could get back there again. If only I could do what you had called me to do. If only I could be who you have called me to be. If only, and it's almost as if we're walking in less than what God has called us to be because we lost a coin. And the coin got lost in the dirt in your house and you turn on a lamp and you're searching for it for most of your life. And many of us, maybe even up until the end, have lost our way. A little bit ago I was sitting with a woman who was about ready to pass on. And so she'd requested to meet with me, and so we sat together. She said, I'm dying. And I'm not ready. And I don't know what to do. Can you help me? I don't know how to cross over is the language she was using. She wasn't a churchified person, but somehow inside of her there was this God particle calling and saying, there's a coin that's lost, there's something missing. I'm not ready to cross over without a full package. And so we prayed together and she connected with God in that way and asked Jesus into her heart, and I vividly remember as she said to me now, I am ready. Jesus, will you take me? She wanted to die. But the reality is God is walking with us and there's this thing that is just sort of missing and God wants it to come together just like the Higgs boson does and when we are connected, we begin to dance, we begin to rejoice, we begin to make the angels dance around us, and things come to life. What is there in your life that is holding you back from becoming all that God has called you to be? You might be young, be older. Maybe some of us are looking at our you know, bucket list kind of thing. There's something you ought to want to do yet before. Or you might say, my life is beginning, I wonder what I'm supposed to become. 
follow your dream. Follow what's in your heart. The Spirit is speaking to you. The Spirit of God will cause you to have life, to have being, to live and to move, to dance, to spin, to rejoice, because you were created to do something special. And sometimes that coin was lost through circumstances. Sometimes it was lost because of a hardship. Sometimes it was lost because of something that you didn't even do yourself. But yet Jesus is saying, it's as if it's a sin. It's a thing that separates us from God. I'm defining sin that way. The thing that makes you less than complete. But when we have this intersection or this complete envelopment with the Spirit of God, we become alive because all of us is there, all ten coins. Think about these things. Not about the things that we've done wrong. Not about the things that could have been. But think about who you have been called to be. So often I look back over my life and I'd say, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish that I wouldn't have done that. I wish my circumstances were different. I wish, I wish, I wish. And it takes me nowhere but downward in a depression wondering what would life be if I would have been different. And yet God has given you ten coins. Think about these things. And bring them into being and welcome them and somehow search them out. Even in the middle of the rubble of your house, maybe your house isn't like my corner of our bedroom. Things are strewed around. And you can lose that special shirt that you wanted to wear the next day and it's under that pile of some clean and unclean clothes. Find that coin. Pick it out. And say, Lord, I'm not ready and I don't know how to do this. I really need your help. I need to connect with you because without you, I cannot be whole. I want to experience your presence, your fullness, the presence of your Spirit. And as our bodies are filled with the Spirit, it dispels the works of the enemy. I think some time ago I played with the concept of exorcism, if you take a glass of oil or of water and if you try to pour oil into it, there's nothing there. But if the glass is full of oil, it's like in a metaphor of Jesus and the work of the Spirit. If Jesus is poured in, it dispels the oil and there's nothing left and we're experiencing the fullness of the Spirit of God and there's no room for the work of the enemy. Instead of just taking that oil which represents evil and spilling it out, our cups are still empty, able to absorb good and bad. But when we are full of the Spirit, our ten coins, all that we have, the Spirit of God fills us and allows us to have capacity to do more than we have ever imagined. You were called for a purpose. How can you reconnect with God? With that God particle for your life. How can you connect so that you can become all that you have been called to be? How can you reconnect to re-envision or re-embrace the things that God has already put in your hearts? Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things because God loves you. You are loved by God. 
This last week I was reading a book called Dear White Peacemakers Working on Racism Issues. But this woman, instead of criticizing those that have made mistakes, this author, she said, you are beloved. Just because we've lost our way doesn't mean you're a horrible person. I invite you back into dialogue, into relationship. Just because you lost a coin doesn't mean you are horrible. You're loved by God. Do not wait until the last minute to make yourself ready. Let's live in the fullness of God's call while we are still alive. Connect with God in your life. Reclaim your lost coin. You are loved by God. Embrace God. And become all that you were created to be. Can you hear the angels singing, spinning, as they connect with the God particle and the electrons in all of our lives begin to rejoice and dance together because we have become and are able to be fully who God has called us to be. Not all of us will be preachers and mechanics. Some will thoroughly enjoy contemplative time alone. Don't try to be somebody else. Take those ten gifts that God has given you and use them for his kingdom. The God particle. Connect. Be who God called you to be. Let's pray together. Lord, I pray that you would invigorate, bring to life, rejuvenate the gifts that you have put within each one of us, causing us to become who you have called us to be. Build your church. Fill our minds with those positive things that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. I had to think of the verse, seek and ye shall find. Are we looking for the God particle? Are we looking for the lost coin in our life? It's important that we do. I'm going to change things up here. I'm going to go back and redo indescribable. So musicians, get your music ready. Um, Claire asked this song to be added in. Notice the words as we sing. Sometimes it's hard to understand God. Sometimes he's indescribable, but he's capable of doing amazing things in our lives. And as we sing, think about your life and the lost particle, the lost coin, and think about the God particle and, and uh, seek you shall find, maybe not today, but keep seeking, because eventually we will.
Bye. 